All right, one more time. Rotate it. Stakes on. Man, you can see that sizzle when I pulled that. When I turn that over, you can see that surface sizzling. Here we go. Hey everybody, Mike Chavez here once again. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. All right, y'all, got a new grill. An SNS slow and sear kettle 22 inch with a slow and sear insert. So hopefully you've seen my assembly video. Hope that wasn't too long. I had over an hour of a, a video to, to cut up and make and make into a a good video that could uh, show you how to put that thing together. So we put that thing together. Um, we lit a fire in it and burned off all the manufacturing oil and stuff like that. And then making a ribeye. Not any ribeye. We got these big old ribeyes. I don't know what they weigh. A pound, about a pound a piece. They're only an inch thick. I wish they were thicker. But what we're going to do is we're going to dry brine them. Okay, so we'll take salt, put salt on them, uh, put them in the refrigerator overnight. And then I made a... Um, I made a barbecue rub, a beef rub, a salt-free beef rub to go on them. And then we're going to go out there. We're going to sear them really nice on there. So this is a, a cold grate sear. So the grate is cold. You don't want the grate to be hot. We, we're not looking for, um, for sear marks, okay? You know, the hash marks on a steak, that, that's not what we want. We want the whole steak seared and just like one big grill mark on the steak. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna get. So y'all stick around, check this out. This is gonna be one of the best steaks I ever made, I guarantee. So let's do it everybody, right on. All right y'all, for these ribeyes, I got two fat ribeyes. These are only an inch thick. So we'll probably direct sear these and we won't reverse sear them. But what I will do, this is the night before, we're going to do a dry brine. Okay? So, our new SNS grill, we're going to do it the right way. So, what I'm doing is just drying them off, front and back. Got them on a wire rack. So, we'll just dry them off a bit. So, to dry brine, what's going to happen is I'm going to take some kosher salt all right regular old kosher salt and we're gonna just salt these down just like you would salt them if you were gonna eat them okay not too much you don't want to over salt just enough these are nice and thick like I said they're one inch thick so they're not quite thick enough to reverse here I'll give them a little pat but we're going to direct sear these bad boys. Hopefully they don't fall apart on me. So we'll salt them on both sides. Get our edges, even the fat. All right. That ought to do it. So I'm gonna put these in the refrigerator and we'll see these before we get ready to put them on the SNS grill, my brand new SNS grill. So these are going in the fridge and now I'm gonna make a, a barbecue rub for beef that doesn't have any salt in it. So this is gonna be saltless. So I'm gonna put these in the fridge and we'll make this rub. All right, for my salt-free dry brine, got a little container here. So the recipe calls for three tablespoons of coarsely ground black pepper. So I have some coarsely ground black pepper. I ground this myself. So three tablespoons. So 
So there we go. Three tablespoons coarsely ground black pepper. One tablespoon. Now the recipe calls for white sugar. But I'm going to use raw sugar. Sugar in the raw turbinado cane sugar. So I'm going to put a big old heaping tablespoon of that sugar in there. Okay, clumped up a little bit, busted up. All right. Now I'll leave the recipe below in the comments for this if anybody's interested. So we'll go one tablespoon of onion powder. So we got some onion powder here. Which humidity got to it. Let's bust this up a little bit. So Nice tablespoon. Make sure this is busted up good. So, fat tablespoon onion powder. And we're also going to put a tablespoon of granulated garlic. Two teaspoons of mustard powder. So we got some Coleman's dry mustard here. So it calls for two teaspoons of the mustard powder. One and two teaspoons of mustard powder. calls for two teaspoons of ancho this is ancho chili powder we'll go one two teaspoons of ancho chili powder and then it calls for celery seed powder. Well, I didn't have any celery seed powder, but I did have some whole celery seed. So I went ahead and ground these up in my mortar and pestle, my mocajete. So we'll put that on in there. And that is it. So I'm gonna shake this up. So this is salt-free beef dry rub for beef. All right, like I said, I'll leave the uh, recipe down below. I'm going to shake it up. Take a look, see what it looks like. All right, that ain't too bad looking. So that's for beef. And we'll put this on those steaks before we cook them. All right, y'all, so that's it. So we're going to leave these steaks in the fridge overnight with that salt on them. So that's going to draw the moisture out of them, and then it'll the salt will penetrate down into that flesh and it'll pull the moisture back in with it and these steaks should be nice and juicy so we'll see y'all tomorrow all right all right y'all we're fixing to get these steaks out but before we do i got a couple of russet potatoes here i got them washed dried i'm gonna spray them down with some olive oil get them nice and coated with some olive oil Sprinkle some kosher salt on them. All right. So I'll take these taters, set them down in the air fryer. I'll set this max to four. 
turn it on. Say it should take about 45 minutes, so I'll check them after about 35, 40 minutes. I'll check them and then go from there. In the meantime, let's get these steaks. All right, y'all, so I took these steaks out of the fridge. These have been in the fridge all night, dry brining. So we saw, we uh, last night we sprinkled salt on both sides. We sprinkled salt. I made my salt-free beef rub. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take some olive oil. This is good olive oil. Spray them. Give them a little rub-a-dub-dub. Flip it over so the olive oil that'll help them brown and it'll also uh, be a binder for this rub so put some rub on here so this contain this uh, shaker I got here you got to be careful with it let me see what size hole let me see if that does good. A little bit bigger hole. And one more time, bigger hole. So this rub has no salt. And I'm going to go with the biggest hole. So you can really put it to it. Okay. So we'll bring it up high. Put that rub on there. Like I said, no salt on this rub because we salted the steaks last night to dry brine them. Okay, pat it down, flip them. Other side. Okay, if we come up high with this. So this is a lot of black pepper, a little bit of sugar, turbinado sugar, um, garlic powder, onion powder, some uh, celery seed, ground up celery seed powder. All right, so we're gonna let these sit here until come to room temperature. It'll be they'll sit here for a half hour, 45 minutes, while the cookers coming up to temp and while the potatoes are being done all right so let's go outside and get this cooker fired up all right y'all so we're setting up our new brand new SNS Sloan Sear 22 inch kettle to do uh, sear some ribeye steaks so I got a full chimney of Kingsford charcoal. I'm going to put half. A little more. Okay, I'm going to put about half of the charcoals in the slow and sear insert. I got a tumbleweed down here. So I'm going to get my torch, fire up my tumbleweed. All right. So we'll get that all set to go all right then so these charcoals in the chimney are good to go there we go we're going to dump these in here all right so i'll get my Charcoal tongs, spread them out. So we want this rare and hot. We're not going to put our grate in yet until we're ready. So let's put the lid on. Actually, before we put the lid on, I've got a drip pan. I'm going to put a drip pan down there. All right, now, hopefully this 
temperature should go up about 400 or more. Okay, you see what we're at now? So we're sitting, it's hard for me to see that about 250, so that's going to climb way up there. So we got all our vents completely open. Yep. All right. Back in a minute with the steaks. All right, y'all, cold grate method. So the grate's not on here. Now we're going to put the grate on. We're going to take our steak. Our steaks have been sitting. They're ready to go. We'll put the steaks opposite the fire on the cold grate. Then, we're going to rotate this grate around until the steaks are over the fire. Then we'll set our timer for one minute. Okay, let me make sure these are all the way over the fire. Okay, one minute. We're going to do this four times. And get this out of the way so we can see. <clears throat> All right. One minute. We're going to bring these around. Take the stakes. So we're wanting that charcoal to get them. Start. One minute. All right. There's another minute. So I'm gonna flip this grate around. Start the timer. All right, another minute. Rotate them around. Get them up there. Get that string out of there. Flip them. Another minute. All right, we'll do this one more time. All right, one more time. Rotate it. Stakes on. Man, you can see that sizzle when I pulled that. When I turn that over, you can see that surface sizzling. There we go. All right, that was another minute. Bring them around. I think I'll, let me see what this other side looks like. Oh my. Look at that sizzle. One more time, one more time, y'all. I done lost count anyway. It's supposed to be four times. We'll make this the last time. What we're gonna do is bring them over to the cold side. All right, that was the last time. So we're gonna bring these over here. Take them a little flip. Let's see what we got. So we're good, 154, these steaks are done. So I'm gonna get these steaks off of here. Yeah, I know this is the same trap. I put them on, but that's okay. It's gonna be fine. 
All right, we'll get these steaks in the house. We'll let them rest. And we will eat. Let me get All right, y'all. These steaks are looking lovely. So let me get heavy duty plate. So let's get tater. So the air fryer does an awesome job on these taters, yo. So we're gonna open this tater up. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna give it a smash. That's better. All right, so let's get some butter. Butter on the tater. Season salt, pepper, a couple of nice gloves, a little cheese, green onion. Steak. Then slice tomato. All right, y'all. What do you think? Is that pretty or what? So let's taste this. All right, y'all, so let's cut into this thing, see what we got. Hopefully we didn't overcook it. I did get a little mad out there with the searing. Oh my, can y'all see that? Is that not pretty or what? I'm gonna give this a taste. Let me cut my tater so we can get a taste of that. All right, you get a couple pieces of this steak. Look at that, this steak is beautiful. All right. All right, y'all, here we go. Look at that, and if you can see it good, I don't want to spill it, drop it on the floor. That thing is looking awesome. Got to try the steak first. Y'all ready for that nice, medium rare, let me turn this light down here a little bit so you can see it a little better. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. All right, y'all ready for that? Seared steak on the s, &S kettle. Brand new kettle. This will be the maiden voyage. Y'all ready? Taste! Y'all? That's how steak's supposed to taste right there. I ain't never lied. <clears throat> Let me chew on that a little bit. Baked tater. Taste! A little bit of tomato. All right, y'all. That SNS grill. I'm looking forward to doing many more cooks on it. This is only the first cook. 
So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. And don't forget, I have more videos over here that you can watch. And hit that subscribe if you haven't done it yet. We're going to eat, y'all.